they were all looters and raiders, plain and simple. They had been sent up here to take over whatever they could hold out, wait for reinforcements. We wanted to send a clear message back. Don't mess with us. Don't look for us. And don't ever come back. We took multiple pictures of all of them also, which they didn't like. We told them that not only would they be dead, but everyone they came with would die also by association. And we would immediately assume why they were there. So we kicked them out a few miles outside the city and tell their friends that we weren't worth the effort. We heard later a rumor that they were all shot and killed trying to re-enter the city. Reason being that their support convoy leadership had an escalating disagreement with the city leadership over who would get the future theoretical loot versus who would get the facility. I guess nobody cared about us, as usual. And that's probably the way it was going to be for a long time. Epilogue With our closing flag ceremonies out of the way and the after action report written and submitted, I went to my tiny home to go to bed. My cat was happily waiting for me. I checked the food and water and both were reasonably fine, but I dumped them off anyway and pat patted the cat. I got the full sniff download from the cat, which made the cat very happy at the new information it gathered. I put my handheld gaming system in its charger that my cell phone also plugged into. The solar panel portion of my charger had been charging all day, which would be enough power for both for another day. I turned the handheld gaming system off to conserve battery life, and I would check for all the tags I got tomorrow. If the handheld batteries ran out before I shut the system off, I'd lose the tags, and that'd be no good. So off it went. I checked my phone, no messages or emails, of course, because cell phone towers had long since been without power or connectivity to the wider net. I scrolled through all the pictures and got really tired and shut my phone off as I drifted to sleep. I wasn't sure how long I'd slept, but I awoke to a cat scratching at the door that wouldn't stop. I tried to block it out, but something about the futility of claws on steel that won't quit uh, gets you awake in a hurry. Alright, that was the end of book three. I will now read an excerpt from book four. This is an excerpt from chapter four, Anastasia Adrift. An Urban Inn Oceanic Survival Story by Chance Paladin. Chapter one, Waking Up, Home Stronghold, Eight Months After the Collapse, Late Summer. I wasn't sure how long I'd been asleep, but I awoke to a cat scratching at the door that wouldn't stop. I tried to block it out, but something about the futility of claws on steel that won't quit and gets you awake. I opened my eyes and remembered that I wasn't in my tiny home on my farm anymore, but a little ways out on the Pacific, in a luxury super yacht that was dead in the ocean. What was I doing out here again? I couldn't remember, and I started to drift back to sleep. Then an alarm started blaring from all directions at once. <laughs> 